Welcome to today's lesson. This is from section 6.1, the standard normal distribution. There are basically two types of questions that you'll see here, one like this and then another one, which I'll do later on. And by like this, I mean where they tell you the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. For most of chapter six, when they, you will know it's a chapter six question because they will tell you that it's normally distributed. Not all, but most. And most of the time, that means you're going to want to draw pictures to help you figure out what to do. You're going to draw a nice bell-shaped curve. The normal distribution is a special type of bell shape. And the standard dis normal distribution has a mean at zero. In part A, it says the probability the temperature will be less than negative 1.05. So we know negative 1.05 is about here. And since it says less than, we know we're going to shade to the left. I would suggest at this point, once you've got your picture done, that you ask yourself, is this a dist or an env? For dist questions, you know where the mark is. In this case, we know the mark is at negative 1.05 and we don't know how much we shaded. M is the opposite, where you know how much you shaded, but you don't know exactly where the mark is. So this is a dist question. So we're looking for the probability that Z, and we're not gonna use our good old generic X for standard normal, we use Z, is less than negative 1.05. Note that unlike with binomials for continuous distributions, it doesn't matter if it's less than or less than or equal to, you're going to get the same result. Now, since it's a dist question and since it's the standard normal, we're going to use norm.s.dist. Norm for normal, s for standard, and dist because we're trying to calculate the probability. The inputs are, they're going to ask you for the x, or the, pardon me, for the z value, and we're going to say negative 1.05. And then it's going to ask you for cumulative. In this class, cumulative is always true, or you can also use the number one. And I will go back and calculate all these in a minute, flipping back and forth between Excel and OneNote. Part B, so again, we need another picture. Calculate the probability the temperature will be at least 2.13. So we'll put a mark at 2.13 and it is positive 2.13. And at least means shade to the right. Again, we know where the mark is. We don't know how much we've shaded, so it's a dist question. So dist means we're trying to calculate some probability. This one is different than the previous one, though, because it is greater than. And Excel can only calculate less than probabilities. So we need to turn it into a less than by using the complement rule. So we can type into Excel one minus and then do norm.s.dist. And again, we'll calculate that in a few minutes. Now those are both examples of one mark questions because in each of my pictures I put one vertical line. In this question for part C, we're gonna have a mark at negative 1.37. If my pen will, there's negative 1.37. And then a mark at 2.08. Now for one mark questions, they're usually pretty straightforward. You either shade to the left or you shade to the right and you use your inequality words to figure it out. For two mark questions, you're either gonna shade to the tails or in between. So it wants to be at least negative 1.37, so greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to, but no more than, so to the left. So we're gonna shade in between it is a dist question because we know where both marks are. Now 
Now, for between questions, you will use what I usually refer to, for obvious reasons, as the between rule. It doesn't have a name like the complement rule. But the between rule says you're going to calculate the probability, and I wrote x, but it should be z. That z is less than 2.08 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.37. And the last probability question type that you can be off by 2.37 degrees in either direction. So either to the right, 2.37, or to the left, negative 2.37. So it's a two mark question. So again, the question is, do we shade to the tails or do we shade in between? And it says since you can be off by more than, so that would mean by like three degrees or negative three degrees, we're shading the tails. And in this case, they use the word either, which you know pairs with the word or, and shading to the tails is an or question. Going back to chapter four, we're going to use the addition principle. And it's important to note here that these two things are mutually exclusive. You can't be less than negative two and greater than positive two at the same time. And the first piece where we have z is less than negative 2.37 is good to go. We know how to calculate less thans with norm.s.dist. But the second part has a greater than, so we'll have to use a complement rule. So I'll combine steps. So we have norm.s.dist of negative 2.37 plus 1 minus. Okay, so let's go calculate these four and we'll come back to the last few questions. So the first question I've already forgotten was Z is less than negative 1.05. So again, that was norm.s.dist, negative 1.05, comma, and again, you can type out the word true. I know I tend to abbreviate it, but Excel won't let you abbreviate it. You actually have to type out the whole word. Or again, you can use one. Z is greater than 2.13. So we have one minus, because it was greater than. So there's our answer to the second question. The third was between negative 1.37 and 2.08. For some reason I put in equals. Where we use that between rule, where we do the first one. So 
minus the second one. Or the lower one, I should probably call it. And the last one, I'll just write off 2 point. I believe it was 37. We'll check it out. Mm -hmm. And this is where we had to also apply the complement rule. One thing I'd like to point out about these first two, we got 0 0.1469 and 0 0.0166. Notice that those two numbers are both less than 0.5. That's purely coincidental. But for one mark questions, you should be able to compare your answer to 0.5 and know whether it seems reasonable. When we go back to these top two pictures, notice you can tell by the picture I definitely shaded less than half. And again, you may shade more than half, but you should be able to tell that from your picture. Two mark questions, that is not always very easy to identify. But one mark questions, you should be able to. Part E. This time it doesn't ask what's the probability. It asks for a temperature. So I'm still going to draw a picture. And it says it's so warm. So that would be on the right side of the picture 10% of the time. So this time we know how much we shaded, but we don't know exactly where that mark fell. So that means this is going to be an M question. And when you decide it's an M, I would encourage you to do two things. Number one, label your unshaded region. So if we shaded 0.1, then the unshaded part is 0.9. And also to label your mark. Today we'll call it Z. Later on we'll give it other names like X. So we're trying to find Z. And we're going to use the command norm.s.m. Again, the norm for normal, the s for standard, and m stands for inverse. Now, there are different m commands throughout um, Excel. If you go by just the ones that I teach you in these videos, the next input will always be probability to the left of the mark. So for my mark, there is 0.9 to the left. Let's calculate that. Notice for the M's there is no cumulative, there is no true or false. So it is 1.28. Another important thing about M's is they always, well, they should, generally speaking, have units. In this case, it's 1.28 degrees Celsius. Probabilities, disk questions, um, usually do not have units. There are a few exceptions to that, but most do not. And the last question is a two-part question. Is 1.75 degrees Celsius considered unusual? And it asks you to justify your answer with two different methods. And hopefully it seems reasonable to you that one method is going to be using dist and one method is going to be using m. Remember that our definition of unusual is if the probability is less than 0.05. So one thing we could do is we could draw a picture. And 1.75 is over here on the right. And we could calculate, in this case because it's on the right, we would shade to the right. 
If it was on the left, we would shade to the left. We could calculate the probability of that shaded region. That would be a dist question because we know where the mark is. We don't know how much we shaded. So we had 1.75 comma true, except notice that's going to calculate to the left and we shade it to the right. So we need to do a one minus, which it didn't take. We get 0 0.0401. which is less than 0 0.05, so it is unusual. Now notice this tells me something for the second method. I should still get unusual no matter what I do. There is a wrong way to do this question where one way you get unusual and the other way you get usual. That can't be right. You know you've made a mistake. The other way that you can work this question correctly is to say, well, if 1.75 is unusual, it's unusually high. So I know if it's unusual, then the probability to the right will be 0 0.05, making this an env question. And I can find what is the cutoff between being unusual and usual with norm s env. We get 1.64. So anything above 1.64 degrees Celsius is considered unusual. Anything less than that is usual. And 1.75 is above that, so it is unusual. So as I said, this is one type of question that you'll see in section 6.1. There is another type which is coming up, but as always, if you have questions, feel free to ask.